Welcome to P, S, Infinitive Phrase. This is sentence pattern number eight. But first, a really quick review. What makes a sentence? You know this. It's got to have a subject, got to have a verb, and got to have a complete thought. You know S, FBS. That's where you have a sentence, a comma, one of your fanboys, and a sentence. You know those fanboys, right? Foreign in orbit or yet so. And then you know S semicolon S, where you have a sentence, a semicolon, and a sentence. There is but one rule, and that's that your sentences must be related. Duh, because you're connecting them. You're going to use this in place of S comma S, because that's not a sentence pattern at all. Then every once in a while, you want to get jiggy with it and add a CA in there, so that you have an S semicolon CA comma S. That's where you have a sentence, a comma, your connecting adverb, another comma, and your sentence. Those connecting adverbs can, can connect those sentences by describing either how, when, where, why, or how much those sentences are related. A few example CAs with weeping and gnashing of teeth. Five minutes later, in the kitchen, furthermore, or however. Okie doke, we also know DC comma S and SDC. You're flipping sentence patterns. If you're starting with a DC, you start with a dependent clause, add a comma, and a sentence because it introduces your sentence. Or if you have a SDC, you just simply put your sentence and your dependent clause. What's a dependent clause? I'm glad you asked. It's got three things. You know this by now, right? It's got a subject, got a verb, and the reason it's dependent is because it has a nonsense word. Need some examples of nonsense words? I gotcha. After, although, subject of verb and a nonsense word, as, as if, subject of verb and a nonsense word, as soon as, as though, subject of verb and a nonsense word, because, before, subject of verb and a nonsense word, even if, even though, subject of verb and a nonsense word, how, if, subject of verb and a nonsense word, since, so far as, subject of verb and a nonsense word, so that. That's right. Okay, so last time we learned P, S, participle phrase. That's simply a phrase, a comma, and a sentence. Remember, a phrase is a group of words that has no subject and no verb. And a participle phrase always starts with an ing or ed word, such as these examples. Here's an ing participle phrase. Searching for the perfect workout, Sally browsed through all the Jane Fonda VHS tapes at the local Goodwill. Don't know who Jane Fonda is and don't know what a VHS is? Don't worry about it. That's why they're at the Goodwill. All right, so Sally is the one who is searching, and she is also the one who is browsing. So I know that this P, S describes the subject of my sentence. So check. I'm good to go. You can also write a P, S with an ED word, like determined to get into shape before summer. Comma, Sally promised herself she would work out at least three times a week. The ED word has to describe my subject, and Sally is the one who is determined, so I am good to go. Today, you are going to be learning P, S infinitive phrase. That is also simply a phrase, a comma, and a sentence. And it also, remember, is the very same. It's just a group of words without a subject and a verb, but this time... It always starts with the word to and adds a verb. So, I will illustrate with a true story. Your first P, S infinitive phrase is as follows. To spend some time together as a family, comma, Miss Bright went with her kids to the petting zoo. So, let's check. Does this phrase describe your subject? Who is doing something in your sentence? That's correct. It's Miss Bright. Is Miss Bright the one who is wanting to spend some time with her family? Check. So, we have a phrase that describes our subject. We know it's an infinitive phrase simply because it starts with the word to and is followed by a verb, to spend. So, let's continue the story. You see, what happened was, to score an easy snack, the camel schemed to take the entire bag of fodder out of Miss Bright's daughter's delicate six-year-old hands. What's our subject now? Frightfully, it's that dastardly camel. He's the one scheming, and he's also the one planning to score an easy extra snack. 
And this is an infinitive phrase because it simply starts with the word to plus a verb to score. So what do you do when a camel is about to bite your daughter's fingers off? I didn't have time to think about whether I would attack the camel or grab my daughter. So I swear I had no choice. Here's my sentence. To save her daughter's fingers, Miss Bright punched that camel with all that she had. Who's the subject? That's right. It's Miss Bright. There I was, punching and trying to save. So this is a P comma S. Works out just fine. It describes your subject. And it starts with two plus a verb. Simple enough, right? You start with the word two plus a verb. Make sure it describes your subject. Add your sentence. However, there is just one word of caution. Does that mean that every time you start a sentence with the word two plus a verb that you need a comma? Consider this sentence. To make Christmas cookies is a family tradition at my house. Where would, you com where would your comma go? If you put a comma after to make Christmas cookies, then you would have to be able to say is a family tradition at my house by itself and make it make sense. And that does not make sense. In fact, it would leave poor Uncle Joe quite confused. So what you need to understand is that, yep, you guessed it, is is a teenage verb. And what is a family tradition? What is doing that teenage verb? To make Christmas cookies. So to make Christmas cookies is the subject of your sentence. This, my friends, is just an S. So if you're going to write a P comma S, you have to make sure that you have an entire sentence after your phrase and comma. Otherwise, you don't want to need a comma because you've just written a simple sentence. Okay. So, like our other sentence patterns, P, comma, S is useful for adding variety. So, check out this S, comma, FBS, which is a frequently overused sentence pattern. We can easily turn that S, comma, FBS into a P, comma, S to add some variety in our writing. Miss Bright wanted to save her daughter's fingers, comma, so she punched that camel with all that she had. There's nothing wrong with this S, comma, FBS, but if we've already written two or three S, comma, FBSs recently, you want to switch it up. So all you do is say, to save her daughter's fingers, Miss Bright punched that camel with all that she had. Notice that all I had to do was take the last part of that sentence, which is already an infinitive phrase, and plop it in front of my other sentence instead. So now you know not one, two, three, four, five, six, or seven, but eight. Count them eight sentence patterns. Look out. That means you're going to have variety. That means you're going to have flow. And you know what else that means? That means you're going to have better writing. And you only have one more sentence pattern to learn. Tune in next time for P, S, Participle Phrase.